today. AMD's new CPU gets tested. More RTX 4090 or melting connectors. RX 7000 is a big advantage and the RX 7900 XTX is coming along with this. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, if you remember in my last video, a Ryzen 7700 non-X model was leaked by Momomo underscore US. Well, today we actually get our first benchmark on the CPU. The part was found in Geekbench, where we can see that it is in fact an 8-core 16-thread part. Not only that, but it has a base clock of 3.8 GHz, which is much lower than the 7700X at 4.5. With that said, when we look at the score, the 7700 got a single-core score of 2000 62 and a multi-core score of 12,685. When we compare that to the 7600X, it got a lower single-core score, which isn't surprising given the 7600X has a much higher base clock. What's impressive here is that the 7700 non-X is 13% faster than the 7600X in multi-core. Of course, the 7700 has more cores, but remember that the 7600X is a 105 watt CDP while the 7700 is only 65. We'd obviously have to run tests to see exactly how much power they pull given TDP more has to do with heat than power draw, but they are definitely correlated. Not only that, but this test was only using DDR5 4800, which is much lower than what AMD suggests. At the end of the day, the 7700 looks like a decent CPU. Like I said before though, I really think AMD needs to focus on board prices. Next up, while PC hardware is really fun to use, it's even more fun to learn how it actually works, especially when you use this video video sponsor. Brilliant, the online learning platform that actually makes learning fun because they teach you by getting you to do it yourself. So you're actually interacting with the material instead of just reading or memorizing a bunch of stuff. That way you learn the concepts themselves instead of just being able to answer a question. And they have a ton of topics, whether you're a beginner or even a professional yourself. I really can't vouch for them enough. Brilliant is an amazing platform and their app lets you do pretty much everything you can on desktop so you can learn anywhere. What's even better is that you can try it for free right now when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Plus the first 200 of you who sign up using my link will get 20% off the annual premium. So visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld today. Next up for today, I have a big follow-up to my last video on an RTX 4090 16 pin adapter melting. That story was of course the first one, so I didn't know if it was just a one-off or a trend. Unfortunately, it looks to be the latter, as multiple new reports of melted 16 pin adapters are surfacing. Another user on Reddit shared images of their melted cable, then a Facebook user, one YouTuber claimed it happened to their pre-built CyberPower PC, and it seems like more and more stories are dropping daily so this is not looking good for NVIDIA's new generation of GPUs. Luckily, we now have a very good idea of why this is happening, as slides from PCI SIG, which is the organization that oversees the PCI Express standard, just leaked. And in it, they were able to show multiple 16-pin connectors that were melted during tests. Essentially, they were aware of this issue from the beginning and were able to observe a failure in multiple suppliers. So this isn't just one company's problem. As for why, they observed this happening for two reasons. Reasons. First is bending it too much to the connector and second is going through 40 or more connection cycles. According to the slide, the reason it causes this is because the pin loses proper mating contact with the receptacle surface. This causes high resistance in the other pins, so more current is transferred to that pin. Basically, you do not want to bend your cable too close to the connector. It seems to mostly be affected by side bends, but I tried to avoid bending it near the connector altogether. The test showed hot spots forming at two and a half hours with melting at 10 to 30 hours. Of course, like I said before, a ton of designs require bends near the connector so I'd personally consider this a design flaw. I mean, the issue can happen with 6 and 8 pin connectors, but clearly it can't handle it with this much power, so they should have changed the design, at least in my opinion. Either way, if you bought Nvidia's newest RTX 4090, I highly recommend checking any bins near the connector. Luckily, if you were holding out for AMD's RX 7000 GPUs, I have some great news. What originally started as rumors about RDNA 3's connector became a fact through AMD's own Scott Herkelman. As you can see, he confirmed that both the RX 6000 and their next-gen RDNA 3 cards will not use the 16-pin connector, meaning you shouldn't have this issue on AMD's next-gen cards, at least not to this extent. Of course, AMD's official render never showed a power connector, so it was up in the air as 
to what they would do. And given AMD confirmed RX 7000 will have an MCM design, I was pretty sure they'd move to the new PCI Express 5.0 connector. Luckily, that's officially not the case, and maybe this is why. I'm not sure, but at least gamers will have an option. And lastly for today, I have yet another big story on AMD's next-gen GPUs. This time, it's about a brand new card we haven't heard of before, along with some new info on an even better one. The story originally comes from Benchlife and later by Video Cards, where they claim that AMD is set to release a GPU called the 7900 XTX. What's wild is that Video Cards actually looks to confirm the story, though they later claim to be confirming it with other sources as well. Either way, the GPU looks to be a beast of a card. According to this, it uses the full RDNA 3 GPU at 12,288 cores, though that is in question as of now. What is in is that the XTX model apparently comes with 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, so this is a seriously powerful GPU. Not only that, but it has a total board power of 420 watts, so not quite at the 4090's 450 watts, but it's definitely a big power hog. Of course, we know it won't have the troublesome 16-pin connector, but it's definitely going to require a lot of a pin and the news doesn't stop there when we look at the specs the 7900 xtx looks very similar to the rumored 7950 xt so it appears to have replaced it but according to video cards the 7950 xt is still an option for upgraded parts meaning to potentially challenge something like a 4090 ti or maybe even better according to this it could be a rumored navi gpu with 3d v cache at the end of the day i'm getting more and more excited for amd's next gen Let's Let's just hope the price doesn't require me to sell my vehicle. So while that does it for today, are you ready for the 7900 XTX, or are you still more leaning towards Nvidia's RTX 4000? Let me know down in the comments below, and make sure to try out Brilliant at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!